Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Triforce podcast. Oh my god! Uh, hosted by myself. Oh my god! I, Sips. Hello. Oh my god! We're and back. Pyrian. Hello. Pyrian Flax. Hello. Greetings. Oh. Gre- greetings and salutations. It's wonderful to hear your voices. This the summer morning. is almost over. Yeah, it's, fuck it's me. Nearly done. It's been a little while since we last recorded. Partly because you guys have been on holiday again. Well, it's the summer. I mean, that's what you do. But the summer's almost over. So it is. don't worry, guys. Oh, no, no, oh, boy. No, let's wind so, that back a second there, young Brindley, uh, if I on. may. So I believe you were away last week. Not not the week just now, but the week before that, you were away. I yeah, was home. You, you went to Corfu for like a week or two. You went you? away. That was, that was two months ago. Then didn't you go oh. to Gamescom or something like that, or TwitchCon or some shit? Like that, yeah, something. he went to TwitchCon. Yeah, he and then did. <laughs> I, I was away last week, and Sips was away last week. But yeah. we're, you know, it's it's August. It's like it's always like this. It's always yes. Holiday Central. I don't don't uh, don't make out like you weren't also away, Lewis. I've Griffin. had my fair share of trips this year. I've Indeed. had a great time. Away a lot. I've had a lovely time. I'm um, good. Had some friends staying over. I've had a few people visit me and stay over actually all at once. But nice. they've all it's been all been a bit kind of very last minutes. Like oh. I'm coming down to Bristol, and I'm always like, oh, do, do you want to stay at mine? And they're like, oh, sure. <laughs> you know, I, like, I, you know what? Like... In all the years I've been coming to Bristol, and, and all the years we've known each other, I have never requested to stay at your house. I've never, no. I've never hinted. I've never sort of been like... Me neither. Yeah, just uh, looking for somewhere to stay. I think that's cheeky as fuck. Yeah, well, I do too. I don't really like uh, when people try to stay at my place. Get your own place. we got enough people <laughs> in this place. But now I'm single... It's more, it's easier. When I had a partner, it was harder to invite people to stay, you know, because it was yes. more of a disruption. Yes. Whereas now, you I can just, You're it's nice. I'm human just nice to have, I just, yeah. I just need, need company, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you're welcome to stay if you want. Next time no, you're I've down. already booked an I'd Airbnb. I've already booked an Airbnb. Also, oh. you know, you don't want me staying with you, because I come back super late when we go out drinking, so. It's you are be- actually, yeah, really, um, you're an inconvenient. You smoke, you drink. I'd be a like... terrible house guest. I mean, I, actually, let me be honest with you. I'm a very good house guest in terms of like I, I don't make a mess. I'm I'm respectful of whatever stupid rules you've got in your stupid house. Whatever they are, I'm respectful. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure. No, <laughs> it's very respectful. Yeah, of very used, respectful. Uh, you would never use the ensuite bathroom. You exactly. would use the guest bathroom exactly. on the, located on the ground floor. But things like I, that. You know, I'll be drunk a lot of the time. So that's not well, cool. that would be weird if you know if I woke up this morning and you like. First thing I saw was you creeping into my own sweet bathroom yeah. to use it. Hey, I gotta take a stinky one. Sorry, Lulu. <laughs> I didn't want to do it in the other one. <laughs> oh, oh man, a little wake up present for me. All right, do you? I've got a story. Do you guys want me to get right to it, or do you want to build up? No, tell us about your holidays. Hit me. Okay, let's, so let's get right into it. Uh, me and Mrs. F went to Santorini, which is a, an island in the. I think it's an Aegean island. In, in yes, in I've, island. It, it's one of these ones that it, I think it was an Overwatch map as well. Yeah. Oh, so, there's a Sublime song um, based on it as well. So it's very highly rated as a picturesque romantic it is. location. It's what they call the Instagram place. People oh. said, oh, you mean that Instagram place? And I was like, I have. So here's the thing. I booked this uh, earlier this year um, as a special getaway for me and Mrs. F while the right. girls were in Switzerland. They, were, they went to Switzerland with the girl guides. Had oh a terrible God, time. Man. Had a terrible time. That does sound terrible. Uh, it girl... was amazing. Like It oh. would have been great. It was just wasted on them. They just all, the girls all argue with each other and they've fucking fallen out and all the rest of it. So, you know, it's one of those things. So they were in these beautiful, picturesque, mountainous yeah. landscapes in, in the lovely heat of summer in like crystal clear rivers. Yeah. Drinking know, from rivers. Lakes. They literally drank from a mountain stream all this stuff but as my daughter pointed out my youngest she was like the thing is these are people we see for a couple of hours a week at guides and it turns out when you spend essentially 10 days with them including two like 24 hour coach trips more or less yeah where you know they're picking you up and driving all the way to Switzerland. turns out you know you kind of start falling out with each other so that was kind of tricky there'll be some issues yeah yes Uh, and my eldest got sick while she was out there, um, so <clears throat> yeah, it was just one of those things. But while they were away, I thought, why don't me, me and Mrs. F have a holiday as well? Like we haven't had a holiday just the two of us in a very long time. Yeah, uh, we went to Edinburgh. Um, that was a few years ago, but that was just for a weekend. So I thought, you right. know, let's, let's do something nice. I had never heard of Santorini because I'm a fucking idiot. I'd never heard of it. I didn't realize it was this hot Instagram holiday location. Nothing like that. I, I had not heard of it. I I don't really look for holidays. I'm not reading the travel <laughs> section. 
I'm well, busy, listen, though. don't feel so bad because uh, I had never heard of it before now either. So, right. So, I mean, oh. it's, it's just not I'd heard of it extensively. I'm sure, yeah. but I, I mean, I, I never look for these kind of things. I don't, I'm not really someone who <clears throat> obsesses about holiday locations and stuff. Um, right. So, I tend not to, to notice that kind of thing. Uh, and it's a very small island, it's like a population of 15,000 or whatever. But, yes. Incredibly popular. We had a really, really nice hotel overlooking this this sort of harbor where the main city of Fira is. And all you could there's like four or five cruise ships at a time parked up every day. Oh my god! People getting boated from the cruise ships to Santorini. Now, a couple of things. First of all, when you land from the cruise ship, they bring you out on a little boat because the cruise there's no place for them to dock in Santorini. It's too small, so they have to ferry people back and forth. There are two ways up. You can either take the stairs or you can take the cable car. The cable car will hold a. I would guess about 36 people at a time these wow. cruise ships hold thousands of people right, and they're yes. often arriving all at the same time so you queue in for an hour or two to get on the cable car uh, right. it's like six cars each hold six person the stairs it's about a half a mile up upstairs it's quite quite a long way in the heat it's like 30 degree heat minimum so you can ride the donkeys up if you want which right. which i would not be happy with because i kind of feel bad for them they're actually mules not donkeys but these things obviously being animals like this shit a lot we walked at one point when it was quiet we walked down the stairs it stank like nothing i've ever endured it was poo in heat like hot poo was on the you stairs could smell. on the stairs because they walk on the steps it's like these big wide cobbled steps and the oh, donkeys right. are going up and down them all day long and they're just shitting and it nobody cleans it and it never rains so it's all just getting stamped into the fucking ground oh, it was no. it reeked so well, i just imagined you, all these you can't instagrammers. smell instagram yeah no all these instagrammers are getting off the boat and going, oh my god, we're finally here, we can take those pictures, and then they have to endure a half mile uphill trek in heat stinking, stinking, the stinking stairs, it was Man. terrible but, the place we were staying, it was a small little hotel, it only had a, a few rooms, and we were in there, it was very quiet, we were like the only ones there for the first couple of days, and then this couple checked in to the suite around the corner from us, now we couldn't see them but we had a sort of balcony, and their balcony was sort of uh, around the corner so we could hear them, so I heard this woman uh, talk she was speaking Portuguese and she was talking for about 20 minutes on her phone. Right. And she was obviously it was a very it's intense. It's a very animated call. language. It, it probably a, it wasn't is. it probably wasn't that intense. They just oh, sound was. intense all no, the time. No, it was. It was. I thought, wow, she's fucking who's she talking to? She must be talking to her, you know, fucking telling her friends how amazing Santorini is or something. But you could tell there was more to it. It was a very animated phone call in addition to what is a very, as you say, animated language. Yes. She's with a fella and he comes out and it's clear that he doesn't speak any Portuguese. Right. So I immediately think that's a bit odd. Like, you know, I hope that she speaks some English. They start chatting and he is having to ask her questions like, who on phone? Why are you on phone? And she's like, I call family. I call family at home. And they were like, it was literally like he, neither of them could have a proper conversation. So I was immediately thinking, geez, how are they a couple if they can't even really speak to each other? So she starts using Google Translate on her phone right. to explain the situation Good to grief. Him. Yeah. Okay. So I immediately start thinking, there's no way that this is a couple. She she might be a hired friend for the oh, weekend. Oh, I see. Like a sugar baby. Yeah. So she gets on the Google Translate and she explains to him that she's on the phone to her family back in Brazil right. uh, because her father. So here's the, the the summary: is her stepfather is a criminal, like a big a big a big bad criminal. <laughs> right. And her sister. I'm like Hang on a second. I like the idea that you are sitting on your balcony, oh, I am. listening to everything they're saying, oh, yeah. and your your wife's like trying to tell you something, and you're like, shh, 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 shh. Just listen, just listen. <laughs> no. So Mrs. F was indoors. It was she'd gone inside because it was too hot. She was just relaxing indoors for a sec. So I would listen. A big new fact would break, and I would go in, whisper to Mrs. F what was happening, and then go back to the balcony. And oh the whole my God! Was. God. <laughs> I mean, I, so, I couldn't help I like, it. I also like the idea that you've never seen these people because they're around the corner. Yeah. So oh, you're no. just picturing them in your mind like we are. Yeah, they're, they're a complete mystery. I never got a look at them, so they're a complete mystery. So her father is this, her stepfather, sorry, is a criminal back in Brazil, and her sister has now also got herself in deep shit, but her family are refusing to bail her out. Okay, right. this, this is, I'm hearing this all. She's she's like almost crying in, in, in Portuguese into her phone, and the Google, Google Translate, Translate is very calmly saying, my stepfather is a drug dealer and criminal. My sister is also now in jail, and my family are refusing to bail her out. So her brother has also possibly overdosed because of the stress of this situation. He's tried to kill.
kill himself by taking too much medicine, as oh she put it. Oh my god. It's like a Spanish soap opera. It oh is. my god. Telly, telly, what are they called? It's like East Enderinos. <laughs> <laughs> oh man sorry but okay. sorry sorry uh, east enderinos <laughs> <laughs> See, so she's explaining this, and she says to him again via Google Translate. And remember, remember the. Let me see if I can type this into Google Translate and get it to read it. But maybe the editor could do it. <clears throat> I want you to hear this sentence. Imagine this sentence in Google Translate. Oh God, what have I done? I'm so far from home and have abandoned my family just for the chance of a better life. All right. Oh my, oh my God. God. That is what she said. Do, There's do, holy do, shit. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> So, oh, fuck. this is crazy. He is silent for some time, obviously taking this in. Right. Um, and then this is what he type. He says something to her. <laughs> I would love it if there's a big long silence and all of a sudden the, in a robot voice, can you suck my dick now? <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, fuck. So, he's having to have a convo with her, again, via Google Translate. So he says stuff in English, but with it, he had a strong accent. I couldn't right. quite place it, but he English was clearly like either his first or, or very, very close second language, but he had a very strong accent either way. Um, so he says to her, I am so shocked. And then he says, How is it that I'm here with you? It's like a dream. You are God's gift. And then... Like I at this point, I'm thinking, God, this is this is nuts. Like they're 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 really she's really falling apart. Um, so they're chatting a bit more, and then I can I can hear them sort of having some weird argument inside, and right. then it settles down, and they're both basically sort of sitting outside and chilling. And then after a while, she says to him, "Uh, th this is in English. This is not Google Translate. Do you have condom?" <laughs> and he says to her, "Don't you carry condoms?" And she says, "No, I don't. Do you have?" And he says, "You said you were on your period." And she says, "You." Said said you wanted sex in the water, the water stops the bleeding. Now this is exactly the conversation. Oh my, oh I, my god. Because I was typing this down so I would remember it because it was so good. So first of all, him asking her, don't you carry condoms, immediately tells me that he's expecting a woman in her line of work to carry condoms. Like you wouldn't, if you were at an ice cream truck, you'd say, don't you carry Mr. Whippies? Don't you, you have know, extra don't, cones? <laughs> yeah, don't you, have a, don't you carry extra cones? So right, right, right. The, it, like clearly he's expecting her to have them. And she's like, no, I don't have them. But he's also like, wait a second, you told me you're on your period. So I'm imagining that at the airport they meet and she takes one look at him and goes, by the way, I'm on my period. <laughs> like, yeah. Nothing's happening this week. Because a, a lot of guys will just be like, oh, then we're not we're not doing it. Some guys don't give a fuck, but some guys will be like, no. So he says, I thought you were on your period. And she says, yeah, but you wanted to have sex in the in the jacuzzi, like in the water, because every the, the balcony's had a little jacuzzi on him. So he's clearly said to her, I want to go to Santorini with you. I will pay X amount. And we, as long as we can have sex in the jacuzzi. And she was like, fine. And has flown over from Brazil for this occasion. And not brought any condominiums whatsoever. Neither of them have bought any, which Jeez. is ludicrous. So then... The, the line, the water stops the bleeding. So I was like, there's no fucking way that's true, because I know that there are special swimsuits that women wear when they're on their period, so nothing leaks out all the rest of it. Apparently, yeah. apparently, uh, I mean, I checked with, not with the, not with the prostitute, but with, with Mrs. F. I was like, is that true? She went, yeah, that's true. Like, if you go swimming, you're not going to, like, leak blood everywhere. It's not no. just going to come pouring out. Yeah. She said, like, apparently that that's a thing. But I'm pretty sure if they had, to, I don't want to get grisly here, but if they had sex, yeah. it's going to involve water ending up in the jacuzzi. I mean, that's pretty fucking grim. Well, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, um, because the jacuzzi isn't, like, um, constantly cycling water, right? You, right. It's you just usually fill it up. Yeah, and then it stays there. Right? So I mean, it's going to be stuck in the water either way. It's it's incredibly unhygienic, and other people are going to use that jacuzzi. Ugh. You're going to want to clean the whole thing out. I like think they, they do disinfect usually it. empty them, and I, I, yeah, but still, you'd have to do a thorough job. I'm sure some places don't. I mean, they must assume that people are having sex in these jacuzzis all the fucking time. So you I'm pretty yeah. sure they're clean. Anyway, they start having an argument. They go inside. I can hear yelling. Can't hear what they're saying. They come back out. I hear him her slap him at one point, like really loud. Whoa! Then, then they're settling down back and forth it's going like this like I i'm really trying at this point i'm like geez this is getting like not fun to listen to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, the, it settles down. We have dinner. We, we go to bed. Mrs. F can't sleep, and at one point she goes out on the balcony for a vape. And uh, she's out there at about two in the morning, and I'm snoring away. 
she's out there. She tells me the next morning that when she was out there, the, she heard them still talking. She could hear them having sex oh. in the jacuzzi. Okay. She's sure. like, oh my God. Now, her description, this is Mrs. F description. The, the prostitute is talking this guy through it. And this is her words directly, like a YouTube tutorial video. No. <laughs> so she's telling him exactly what to do. Like, <laughs> as if you're describing someone how to fix a broken sink or something like that. Like, that's the level of coordination that is required to guide this guy through. Oh. At this point, Mrs. F is definitely going to tell the staff. She's like, I'm fucking sick of this. These people are ruining this. It, it, it's, they're incredibly loud. They're playing music on their phone all the time. Like that tinny, rattly music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, the, 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 the Portuguese, the Brazilian girl never shuts up. Like, talking all the time. And they're fucking in the balcony. Like, come on, this is too much. So, the next morning, uh, we're, we're actually going to leave. Okay, before this, yeah. let's just talk about this. You, you mean the YouTube directions like, like, tweak my left nipple? Like, hold, like pull hold, my hair. Hold that there. Like, yeah, put that in like, there. Like, okay, like step yeah. every single Literally step. Literally every step. Who is this guy? Because, like, Who is this guy? I'm not having sex for long enough for instructions. <laughs> 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 like, uh, you know, like one thing is said, I'm like, done, I'm done. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, you go. Oh. Let's have sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're watching the tutorial on like the 10 times speed you can play YouTube video. <laughs> so uh, the next morning we're, we're getting ready to check out and Mrs. F says to the the, the ladies at the reception you, uh, you guys might want to have a word with the couple in the room uh, next to us because they're really bad and they went oh don't worry they're gone and we were like oh wow like between last night and this morning, they're gone. And she said, "Oh yeah, apparently he had to. Br his flight got brought forward, and he had to leave. So she left as well. Now your flight got brought forward. I, by I, okay, I, it's something I've, that's never happened. I've personally <laughs> never heard of that. <laughs> I'm gonna use that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh that's shit, great. my flight's been brought forward. I must go. <laughs> See you later. Yes. I've, I've literally never heard of that. That's my not, flight got brought forward. Not a forward. thing. Yeah. And by like more than a day, because they were clearly gonna be there for." a few days at least the weekend you'd think so oh yeah my flight got bought forward i've got to go sorry and she like he's fucked her and now he's out he's like well i've done that i don't want to spend a weekend with this woman i'm leaving that's clearly what happened maybe they didn't have sandwiches and he was just like <laughs> no I sandwiches. <laughs> but i was just like what the fuck but it, it didn't i mean it was just one thing in the holiday but it was just so bizarre i couldn't i couldn't not tell you guys about it it was just such a weird conversation to overhear and i just yeah. thought this has been a really shitty weekend for both of them. yeah like they've had a miserable fucking time she's got this family drama going on back home and has had to have sex with this guy he's like clearly not having the time of his life which he expected to it was terrible so they made up basically uh, and everything led up to this moment where they had sex in the jacuzzi and she was like doing like a tutorial yeah man i don't yeah i don't i don't know how people do how how people do the these things i guess it's just I, it's I mean, it weird, just sounds like it? a terrible yeah terrible it sounds situation. awful yeah. yeah i can kind of picture him in my head though as like this sort of overly tanned very white teeth tall with a fade you know longer hair on top Wait, so you um, think he was a good looking dude? I think he's a I think he's a good looking dude. I think yeah, Lewis I think she... was the Brazilian girl in the equation. He was there. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know a little too much about him, Lewis. <laughs> I think I pff, I think he's a good looking and I also think she probably well, I think that again, she wouldn't have eventually wanted to have sex with him, you know, because she'd already made the excuse, the period excuse, right? Yes, and she'd so... set that up. But then they did end up. Then obviously she I, like this is the thing. That that was my my opinion. My take on it was that she had either just warned him and was like, but don't worry about it. That was like her get out of jail free card if yes. she didn't find him hot. That was know? that was her. My flight's been brought forward. Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, that was that was her ready her, ready her, excuse. I'm really sorry I'm on my period this exactly. weekend, so we can't have sex. Yeah. Because uh, but then turns out when he was hot, she was like, Oh, I kind of do want to have sex with him now. I just thought maybe she was bored. And she thought, well, why not? You yeah, know, fuck yeah, it. Let, sure. Let's just do something. Because otherwise just gonna sit here and he's gonna be miserable and it's going to be a shit weekend so i'll just fuck the guy who cares um and they did it in the jacuzzi as requested i don't know whether more money changed hands and he was like i'll give you another foul and then we'll do it who knows what the situation is my imagination I reckon is it's running a daddy wild. baby situation and he was like once he read once she told him all this stuff he was like i'm getting the first flight out of here but <laughs> also i am here for the night i can't you know it's 10 p.m she's telling me this crazy stuff but you know, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna make the most of it. Oh. I don't know. Maybe he had negotiated it up. 
I, I, I mean, what kind of music were they listening to on their phone? I imagine like it was like lots of Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> why on earth who, who would you imagine that? <laughs> I don't know. Why not? I don't know. No, the whole thing is so she... ridiculous. Why not make it a little bit more? <laughs> all she was listening to was was Brazilian pop. Like, oh, right. Yes. Like, yes. And, that's and, and loud. And she was singing along and you could tell he was just like, like he didn't know any of this music. And it's all just Brazilian pop. Like, that's it. No. And she's singing really loudly along with the tinny phone. So we're trying to sit and relax and that's all we can fucking hear. And she just talked. The whole time, either Jeez. on the phone or through Google Translate to him. And at one point, I remember this was a weird thing. They'd gone inside for it and they'd come out, and he was asking her some questions. I couldn't really hear what he was saying, but her replies on Google Translate were, Why do you keep asking me about this? I've told you, I don't like to have to repeat myself. I was Whoa. like, Jesus, calm down. But yeah, it was like, it was frosty. You could tell Man. relations were frosty for a little while there. I don't know what the conversation was, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't going well. Holy crap. Wow. Would you like yeah. to hear the high point of the of the trip? It, that sounded like the high point That to was me. the low point. The right. high point was we went fishing. And what? you know I love to go fishing. I said no, to, I didn't know that. You actually fishing. went fishing? Yeah. Nice. How many times have you been fishing in the last five years? Uh... Once. Okay. When do I don't get a chance to go fishing very often? Just, like, well, this is why this is why we didn't know. It's not exactly a, no, a hobby I mean, of yours. I don't, I don't think I'm known as a fisherman, but I, I do love it. It's a lot of fun. Okay. So we went out. It was a little Greek boat. It was, if you, you know, the boat, the orca in Jaws. It's about the same size as the orca. Okay. That's how big the boat was. So, it wasn't so did huge. you book this through the hotel or something? No, no. no or some was, uh, I found it on TripAdvisor. Found it on okay. TripAdvisor. So went fishing and they pick you up from your hotel in a little van, drive you to the dock. It's not a big island. Drive you to the docks. You get on the boat. There were like three other families on there. Um, okay. So it was me and Mrs. F. It was another couple with their daughter. It was a dad with his two kids, two of his kids, I should say. His wife and his eldest did something else. And then these three old Danish people. And the three old Danish people have have been doing this trip for 15 years. Sure. And they do it three times minimum every time they come to Santorini. Whoa. And I was like, wow, that's some review. Jesus. So we head out. The crew, there's like a crew of three or four, and we go out to the nets that they'd set that morning. We bring in the nets, they go onto this sort of big reel, you reel them in, and the fish, are, little fish are caught in the nets. These nets aren't enormous, some industrial thing. They, they're they too small to catch big fish like dolphins and turtles and shit like that, so they, we're not fucking with the environment. Any of the little fish, you put them back, and the ones that are edible, we eat. And the one thing they really want to eat is the invasive species, so they're really happy to catch like lionfish, and there's some other pointy fuckers that are like... <laughs> Toxic to if you step on them, and they're invasive species, so we eat those. Right, and then we're pootling along, and we set up. They've got like a little rock with a rope and a and a buoy, and they tie off to that. You jump overboard and swim in the sea. There's all fish around you. Then you get out, and then you start fishing again. Catch some fish. They'll cook them right there on the barbecue. They bring out this huge banquet, all this Greek food. And with all the fish that you've just caught, you eat that. There's free booze all day, so we're just sitting there drinking beers in the sun, and then and then you go home. It was like six hours. It was fucking fantastic. It was so nice. Everyone nice. else was on there was really lovely. The swimming in the sea was amazing because it's so salty and so warm that you just basically float. And yeah, there's just fish all around, and it was it was magical. It was absolutely magical. So that was the high point of the trip, I'd say. We both loved that. Nice. That sounds great, dude. It was. Great. That sounds great. It was great. Fishing is so much fun. What if you've got like. Like, I obviously worry about a few things. First of all, seasickness. Yeah, like, I did. I do get a little seasick. So for a couple of hours, I was feeling a little headachey, um, and I was sort of like, oh. But if you stay right in the middle of the boat, the rocking isn't too bad. And it was and just the beer sort of, sorts you out. Yeah, you have a couple of beers, you'd be all right because you're dizzy anyway, you know. And then you, you just settle down and you're okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was just it was really lovely. I would recommend it. Oh my god, that sounds great. We did take a boat out for a day in Corfu, and it was it was the best day it's to beautiful. do that. Yeah, it's. Beautiful. it's it is just it's not it it kind of feels like a safe adventure that's mm. what i always say <laughs> no i like that it, yeah it's like you're you're going off into the unknown, you know, and a little bit, little bit of danger. But you get like you, you know, we pulled up to this sort of uninhabited Greek island, and of course, there's like cigarette butts there. You know, you right. think you're the first person to ever have set foot <laughs> on this place, and of course, some other tourists have been here before you, sort of thing. But um, yeah, but for a moment, you sort of feel like you're out in the wild blue yonder um and yeah it's 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 lovely what kind of fish did you catch lionfish what other stuff so like i i don't know i did catch there's a picture um i posted on instagram i want to confess this it's called a trumpet fish right it looks like a big if you drew a fish and smushed it it's like a big line of a fish with a very long mouth and again right. they were delighted to catch that because it, it just hoovers up the eggs of other fish that's what it does oh so it, it basically kills other fish before they get born so 
uh, we caught one of those, and that got cooked. Uh, there were a few other fish. I did not catch. The, <laughs> I did not catch the trumpet fish. I took a picture of myself holding it as if I had right. caught it, but I didn't. I caught a much, much smaller fish. <laughs> that was all I caught. It was like the size of, smaller than your hand, than your palm. That was how big my fish was. Uh, but we ate that fucker anyway. Nice. Um, I couldn't honestly tell you the names of the fish. I'm sorry. You couldn't. No, they all basically look like fish. I mean, you know, fish. Fish do be like that. You yeah, know? they're just kind of fishy. Yeah. Oh, a parrotfish. That was one of the other things we caught was a parrotfish. Ah, um, uh, I've heard of them. Yeah. Uh, but these are all lionfish, parrotfish, trumpetfish. These are all like pretty interesting. They yeah, sound yeah. like a fucking aquarium. I dude. know. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. But um, but they're just there's this fucking millions of them. Like they're, it's not like you're catching the last lionfish. Lionfish are invasive. They're not meant to be there. And because nothing will eat them, they fucking eat everything else. So they were like these fucking lionfish. I'm glad we caught a couple. We're gonna eat these bastards. And I was like, oh okay. So they it's are all, they are venomous. This is stuff that you don't get in a fucking restaurant either, know, right? Yeah. These fish, right? I've never ordered live fish, trumpet fish, no, or never. fucking parrot fish in a restaurant. No, but I guess because they they're good. maybe not very big. Yeah, you don't get much. So generally the way they do it is they, they put it in some light batter, not like fish and chip batter, but just an outside coating of batter. Fish being fish, it cooks very quickly. Um, And you just go bam, bam, and then they serve it. And because it's little, you basically eat it with your hands. You just pull fish off it and eat it. And like you, you, you have to eat like four or five of these things to get a decent amount of, of food off them. But they also had like salads and stuff like that. So it was all... They're, so you're eating the potatoes. skin and stuff. Yeah, yeah you're eating the like, whole fish. You're just fish. going for it like a fucking... Yeah. And yeah. just, you know, picking the bones so it's not like you're sitting down with like a big fucking wadge of fish. It's not like it, a they're quite fillet. little. It's not like a fish fillet. Yeah, no. it's like a hand fish, like a snacking fish. You know, <laughs> uh, it's like a snacking, a snacking yes, fish. Yes, yes, yes. So you eat enough of those, you're good. But uh, it All was right. just so great. it's like kind of like having crisps. <laughs> yeah, it was like crisps. It was a lot like really big fishy crisps. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was lovely. That sounds great. You're sitting on a boat all day in this Greek weather, enjoying. I mean, man, just I'm imagine so jealous. it. Yeah, just imagine it. So what? What I want to do next time is like either you can do this thing where you go island hopping, where you just get a boat, you live on the boat, and it goes between islands, and you get off and swim and fish, and and then get back on the boat, or find a nice, really quiet island. There's one called like Hydra or something like that, um, which is there's no cars on the island. It's just the garbage trucks are the only motorized vehicles. You got to take donkeys around or cycle or walk. Small island, just live there by the sea for a week or so and just relax. I think that would be really nice because Santorini was fucking busy, like crazy busy busy mm. and full of fucking Instagrammers. So there were loads of people. They were all dressed up to the nines and all taking the same picture for their Instagram of them. Like, you know the way holiday pictures? Yeah. Like, taking a picture in front of X. Like, the Leaning Tower of Pisa and people holding it up with their hand. Like, there are 10 million photos of that, right? It's the same deal with Santorini. People go there because they want to get those Instagram shots, but it's already been done a million times. So, it's different if it's for you and you want the pictures to remind yourself, but you're taking the same picture as everyone else in order to show so look at me, I'm in Santorini, here's my influencer shit. It's kind of lame, I think. It's just, th th there's nothing original to it. And it's all so overpopulated with exactly that kind of person that you're essentially just doing what everybody else is doing. But it's, instead of it, just keeping it to yourself, yeah. now you're making it public as if it's a big deal. That's that's the way I see it anyway. Oh my God, like there's, you know, what is it, Penny Fan, the, um, the Welsh Brecon Beacons? Right, Greek. yeah, yeah. The amount of people I've seen on Hinge who have that as their picture. Do you know what I mean? It's like, has every fucking What's it called? Middle-aged man and woman in <laughs> Bristol climbed to the top of Penny Fan? I think so. And it's the same thing with like, you see these sort of very, because it's such a generic looking Instagram backdrop, like you said, it almost feels like it's done. <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess what makes it unique is you in it. So you have to ensure that you focus on on you being mm. interesting. Getting interesting all the part. getting the the perfect lighting on your muscles and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting the oil, getting the oil and out, and oiling that mustache, yeah, oil getting the profile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Oh my god, what 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 a nice time. Yeah. Before we continue, today's sponsor is ExpressVPN. Going online without ExpressVPN is like using your smartphone without a protective case. Most of the time, you'll probably be fine, but all it takes is one accidental drop onto solid concrete to make you wish you'd protected yourself. 
Each time you connect to an unsecured network in cafes or hotels, for example, your online data can be stolen. Whenever you connect to an unsecured network, for example, in cafes, any hacker on the same network can gain access to and steal your personal data, passwords, or financial details. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. ExpressVPN creates a secure, encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. Hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It's super secure. It'll take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. It's easy to use. You can fire up the app and click one button to get protected. And it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. So you can stay secure on the go. I use ExpressVPN at home. It gives me some security and I, I feel I feel better for using it. So I recommend you do too. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash trifles. That's expressvpn.com slash trifles. And you get an extra three months free. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. Be safe. What about you, Sips? Where did you go? I went to uh, Center Parks with my family. Uh, yes. We took our car on the boat. Uh, speaking of seasickness, there was no incidents of seasickness on the way there. But on the way back, there was one uh, minor seasickness. The baby puked on me again. Uh, <laughs> it's a four-hour ferry crossing. But uh, luckily, she's a little bit bigger, and I managed to catch most of it with a sick bag and then she slept dad reflexes yeah. wow yeah. how did you know the baby was going to be sick they get well, a look they get a look on that face she was getting right. all she was she was very uncomfortable and yeah she had the look on her face and then when they're like really small it just comes out it just it projectile everywhere but when they're a bit bigger you get like uh you know a couple of like you know heaves before anything comes out uh, right. i don't know if when the last time you puked was but um i'm kind of the same you know like you can I'll, feel I'll it coming once or twice mm. and then and, and then the it, heaving sort of makes it yeah sort of it, it's almost like a relief i think yeah. sometimes yeah because <laughs> you're like i've been feeling sick for a while and now it's yeah. finally coming and and she was like, on a on a holiday diet, so um, most of what came out just smelled like, uh, you know, like sweets. It was just, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't too bad. Uh, I mean, it was bad. It was bad, but it wasn't um, it wasn't as bad as the last time it happened, where I was just plastered in it and I didn't have a change of clothes or anything. But oh my good god, grief. yeah. But it was oh. fun. It was a fun. It was a nice, uh, nice, fun family trip. It went really fast. I couldn't believe how quick we were there for a whole week. And it was just like blink of an eye, it was done. But it was good. We went swimming and we played some badminton and we played this like uh it's like it's kind of like racquetball in a racquetball court, but it had a, a projector that projected what looked like Tetris on the wall, and you had to use the ball to like smash blocks. There was like a oh, bouncing I've ball on the that. wall that you had to like, you know, free and there's like a Space Invaders one and everything. So we did that. It was pretty fun. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, a, it was a good trip. It was, um, it was nice. And um, we got back. And then I went off to Gamescom as well. Uh, couple, How was that? A couple days after. Well, I didn't actually go to Gamescom. Uh, we, were, we were beside Gamescom. But we got to play City Skylines 2. Um, oh, I'm looking forward to that, mate. It's good. It's really good. I enjoyed it. And uh, the event was with uh, Paradox. They they hoisted us up in a in a in a crane 50 meters above Gamescom. Yes. Uh, and we so we That's were all right. sitting on this table. It's like yeah, it's 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 meant to be a dining experience or that's yes, what it's like a dining in the sky. Yeah, like a dine in the sky sort of thing. But they 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 put a whole bunch of computers on and hooked it up with uh, some some internet and we, there was like people with cameras up there there was drones and everything it was quite quite the production it was they they did a pretty good job as well i don't think anyone died that was so <laughs> paul asked me if i wanted to do that and yeah. i said fuck no like yeah no i mean i would never not. do it again but um it was it was it was all right it was an experience we got to hang out with ravs and Love we drank a lot of beer and yeah. ate a lot and uh, wandered around Cologne during our free time and then did the event. And then we were only there for like a full day and like, you know, two two evenings or whatever. But it, it was enough. It was fine. Nice. And then, do you know why uh, I don't want to do that stuff, the going up in the air for, for a bit? Is because you guys probably won't remember this. Um, and I doubt many of our listeners will. But Noel Edmonds had a show back in the 80s where they used to get people to do stunts and shit. And you can look uh -huh. this up. It's a pretty interesting story. Um, this guy went up in a, in a fucking crate or something like that with a bungee cord. Man. And he died. Oh, um, shit. This was in the rehearsal. He died. He fell to his death. 
um, this bungee cord was a piece of shit. Something snapped, and he just whatever he was like in a box of some kind. Oh my god! It was god, meant man. to bounce, and he didn't. He just died. And the safety standards in place were fucking shocking. It was all he was basically written tire relying on this one carabiner, which was like not fit for purpose. Right. Um, and I'm not saying that this would have happened. I'm not saying you know that there was lack of safety. I'm sure that the people involved with this whole stunt were absolutely taking all the right precautions. But my feeling is, why take a chance? Yeah, like apparently gen- not. I found it. So the stunt was called Hang 'em High. Uh, it involved it was the 1986. Yeah, uh, there was a guy. He had a carabiner clip attached to his bungee rope to a crane, and it sprang loose during the jump. He he just basically he he did a bungee jump, but the the cord wasn't connected properly. Yeah, it was it was a state fell and died. So I'm saying I'm sure the people involved in the the thing with paradox. We're doing yeah. it right. The 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 Noel Edmonds people were definitely not doing it right, and there was a big inquiry, and the BBC yeah. had to step step up its safety standards and all the rest of it, which you yeah. think would be well, pretty fucking obvious. But when we were when we were getting ready to do it, okay, at first I thought there's no way they're sending us up in something like that. I thought it was going to be like a gimmicky thing. Like I actually thought it was going to take place in Gamescom on stage, right. but they were going to have a green screen and just lift us up like two feet or something. <laughs> Because I thought, there's no fucking way, right? They're going to send like 12 people up there. Um, into the sky. Yeah, I've seen in, this. Oh, into sorry. the sky. Like, yeah, it's... I mean, the safety on this, it's obviously been done a lot, this. So the safety yeah, well, it's, yeah, a, it's, a, day, it's a separate company that does it. It was a, the, it's a, it's a company that does like the dining experience or whatever. Or like, so like a, like a hotel or a restaurant will hire these guys. They'll turn up with their big truck and crane and all the gear and everything and then you know so like it, it, their their standards are probably a lot higher than say no offense to paradox but if paradox were doing this by themselves with like a bunch of audio techs or whatever maybe not as safe yeah but these guys this is what they do sort of thing right. so it, that's it felt the thing. a little you, bit you better you gotta get some experts in. yes yeah and that's i think the bbc just had some lad Right. Like do it. So yeah. yeah, I'm not. I'm not besmirching the the, the good name of Paradox at all. No, no. Uh, it was, and it I'm was sure fine, these guys though. knew what they were doing. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about because it was a big deal. I was like ten, and I remember at that time you think of television and and these stunts as being like this amazing thing, and then that happens. I was like, holy shit, you can die on TV! Like I could not fucking believe it. it blew well, my tiny brain. There was one. There was one casualty. Uh, in the whole thing, uh, somebody dropped their phone while oh we were up there. Oh my god! And oh, it good fucking smashed to bits <laughs> oh, no. on the ground below. Like there was, it was just total. There was nothing left. It I'm going to just... ask, where did they have their phone that it was able to fall? So just easily? in their hand. I, they were just. I think oh. they were just goofing around. They were excited to be up there, trying to take pictures and videos and stuff, and then just slipped, and that was silly. It. Uh, yeah. You know, people drop shit all the time. Oh, I know. And yeah. I, I know this because, uh, and things fall off people. Like, you always think, I'll oh, hold on to it. But there's something about the moment. Like, if you think about it, if you're just walking around holding your phone, you don't drop it that often. No. But there's something about the fact that it could be lost forever that makes people drop things more. I don't know if it's some kind of nervous thing, some kind of nervous reaction, but a couple of years ago, the Thames near us, sometimes when the tide is really low, sometimes it goes like lower than you could imagine, to the point where you can walk across the Thames uh, in Richmond, you can just walk across. It's, it's Holy just, crap. It, there's like, it's just puddles. There's, it's like the whole river's dried up temporarily. There's just a little stream in the middle. And all there is along the rocky bed of the Thames around there is pairs of glasses, pairs of sunglasses, cameras, and phones that Jesus. people have dropped while yeah, they're on yeah. a little boat or something, or they just oh, dropped it in the water. Shit. So if you think about how infrequently you drop these things at home, I don't, my glasses don't fall off my head very often. My, my sunglasses don't just shoot off my face. No. I don't drop my phone often or my keys or whatever. Yeah. But uh, to look in this river, you'd think that's all people do. It's just fucking <laughs> drop shit all day long. People people do. I mean, I think it's like I drop and lose my sunglasses and umbrellas all the time, right? And I end up with the, the shit ones by accident. Like, I've got a couple of pairs of sunglasses I've had for years and years and years that I don't like wearing, but they're the only ones I haven't lost. So I end up, for some reason, I keep, for some reason, I can't lose them. Um, I was walking down around the harbour the other day and I was just in my own world. I noticed there was like a a little a kid's toy, like a little raccoon thing on the floor. Yeah. And I was like, hmm. And part, and there was like, in, in quite quite far away from me, but a distance away was like a woman 
with pushchair and I thought do you reckon it's hers now like I was like for some reason I maybe I'd even like seen it subconsciously fall out and I hadn't noticed it like so I was in another world but I got to it and I picked it up and I was like I, re- I reckon this is this woman so I was walking I was like power walking up to her to get back <laughs> um just but the whole time I'm power walking I'm, I'm thinking what if it isn't hers what's she gonna say she's and not gonna, gonna, she's gonna, not gonna scream her? is she do you know what I mean yeah so, but she's not gonna be like ah get away from me <laughs> <laughs> So well, she might, like, you never know. <laughs> so she's like making progress as well. So I think that's partly why, like, I thought, oh, you know, she's she's actually going fast. So maybe, like, you know, maybe she wouldn't have noticed because you know she's like. So I catch up to her, and she was so grateful. She was like, oh my god, this is this. I don't know what I would have done. He wouldn't have been able to get to sleep without this and all this, you know, all this nonsense. So I felt like I'd done my good deed for the day. And I almost like was really second guessing myself on it as well, because um, I didn't see it drop. And I didn't, I didn't know whether it was hers, but I, yeah. it just, it was just the right, the right place, right time. And I felt like I'd done my good deed. But then again, she probably would have noticed and backtracked and found it anyway, right? Yeah. You know? Maybe it was full of drugs. Maybe she's a mule. Yeah. Oh. Drug mule. Yeah. Maybe that's why she's so grateful. That is a hundred percent a sane and correct assumption to jump to in that situation. Yes. It, yeah. Well, like the yeah. sugar baby yeah. prostitute. I watch thing. a Absolutely. lot of. I watch a lot of movies, so. <laughs> Oh yeah, I watch a lot of movies, <laughs> so I know what I'm talking. About. Do you reckon that's the thing? Do you reckon that's the thing? If you meet if you meet a sugar baby online from Brazil and you're loaded and you're a big rich guy, do you fly them out to Santorini? You that, tell I mean, us, that... man. You've just described your life, so <laughs> you tell what us. What kind of journey is that? Brazil to Santorini? It's a hell of a trek. I mean, it must be easy ten hour flight. Let's have a look. I'll look it up. You guys carry on. There's got to be a change somewhere as you well. You think you like, use a third party one. and book like the cheapest, get the cheapest deal you can? Oh, it's, for a, them? Four, it's a 15 hour flight. Oh, oh God. That's just no. to Greece. And then she'd have to take a flight from there to Santorini. There's oh. no way there's direct Brazil to Santorini. It's a little airport. All that just for one night in the jacuzzi. Well, it could have been four nights for all we know. But, you know, <laughs> Sips, his flight corporal forward. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, gosh. Out of his control. Yeah, no, I, what can you do, eh? With your... We're definitely going to get some e- emails about flights being brought forward actually my flight was brought forward by 48 hours you guys are idiots Ooh. i've never had a flight brought forward, it, brought forward. i've had many many delayed but... checking a private jet could be bought for if it's then his again, they private wouldn't... jet what the fuck the pilot doesn't tell you all right boss uh we just want to go so flights brought forward oh yeah i know i'll be right there no yeah. no also this well... guy wasn't that rich fuck me if i'm staying in the same hotel as him he doesn't have a private jet okay no you're right Mm. I'm just trying to unpick this mystery. I love it so much. I know. It really kept me occupied. There's so much to think about with other people's lives. You know, and it's just it, other people are pretty fascinating. They generally. are. Especially the, they... just the situation that he got himself into. And at no point, this is the other thing. Was, it would have been very simple for him to just be pleasant to her and just be like, "Oh my god, that, that sounds awful. Is there anything I can do? Like, do you want to talk about it? Nothing." Well, he's he just like he was Google translating some yeah. of, some things to that effect, though, wasn't he? Yeah, but then apparently he kept asking her the same question to the point where she got pissed off and had to have a go at him via Google Translate. Oh. But then still somehow he gets to have sex with her, and I'm thinking, first of all, I never got to see them. Well, maybe but- she's contractually obliged at this point. <laughs> at this you should have point- got one of them like long mirrors on a stick, <laughs> <laughs> like the SWAT teams used to yeah, peek around, around the, the door. corner. Yeah, <laughs> good God. I should have just, or could have just put my phone around the corner subtly and taken a picture. And but I, I might have called them inflagrante delicto. I, I wouldn't wanted to do that. Yeah, no, you would they, have been in trouble for that. I would yeah. have got booed out of the hotel. A big, ha- they, they're having an argument. A big hairy <laughs> arm like pokes around the side <laughs> of the building. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. So I just had to imagine. I mean, if he's flown her out from Brazil, she's got to be pretty fucking hot. That that was my yes. Assumption. Oh yeah. Also, she was really annoying, so she probably was really hot. Most hot women are really annoying. There you go. Take that, ladies. Well, you never never know. I I mean, okay. For example, while I was in Center Park, so I was watching TV one night, and I watched a documentary film about a man with an 80-pound testicle. (laughs) (laughs) What a segue. uh, If I hadn't, if I wasn't watching with my eyes, I could probably just think, wow, this guy's probably pretty hot or whatever. And I mean, you know, he probably was reasonably attractive but he had an 80 pound testicle and uh <laughs> he himself weighed about a thousand pounds as well oh my god well it was a, he just got himself into such a state you know like uh yeah but how did his not get so big i don't it's some sort of um it's it's well it's a condition obviously oh. but it's something that uh that that progresses quite slowly so like i i think 
the first time he he thought anything was wrong was there was a bit of like uh swollen like a bit of swelling in his nutsack he that couldn't he see the telly quite, because of his bollock he, quite, he wasn't quite sure what it was <laughs> and then he left it and left it and left it and left it and then Ooh, he left yeah. it for seven years okay That's and this decision. thing looked like a gigantic tater tot that he just <laughs> he would he just had to sort of lumber around with was he like buster gonad from viz who had to carry his bollocks around in a wheelbarrow uh, well i was saying to my wife he should be carrying this thing around in a wheelbarrow because it looks like he's just got a dangling beach ball like in his pant leg oh God. when he walks around like it is it was enormous and inside this testicle oh no well, I, I was don't want to hear about that <coughs> bit. I for think... seven years his penis fully intact no oh problems with God. it yeah <laughs> what he, do you he, mean? At, at some at, at some point he just figured i just don't have a dick anymore like it's gone and if i ever have this thing removed they'll probably accidentally take my penis with it but what are you saying how yeah. did he pee what was this in the show? shower he stood up in the shower and just he just peed he could still get boners and stuff apparently he how said how does he know but him and his wife were unable to have sex for yeah, seven no years shit. while this was all happening what? His wife. at no point did it occur to what him what was she at doing at no point did it occur she, to him just to helping him just hoisting it up when he got into bed he was he was he had to stay home he couldn't do anything he couldn't is this work real? or anything is this real i don't know look it up it's called dan's 80 pound testicle the, the documentary do, do, I watched. Do you, uh, do you think that she thought? Oh my god! Oh, I wish I hadn't googled is, that. Is she like <laughs> Kathy? Is she like nurse nurse fates or whatever? Where no, she was basically she seemed, keeping him hostage. She, she seemed, right? no, but no, no. She was she like, if fine. he, if he fixes really that nice. testicle, he might find someone else. <laughs> it was a combination of he, they're, they're American, so he probably didn't have health insurance. He probably couldn't afford to go and get it treated or whatever, and then. Just left it, hoping that you know whatever he would learn I'm to sure live it with it, or it would sort, sure sort it itself out, or whatever. There's quite a. I mean, the whole thing was a little bit. I felt bad for him, obviously, but you couldn't help but chuckle a little bit because some of it was so ridiculous. Like at one point, it looks oh like God. he's got a space hopper in his trousers. That's yes. literally what it looks yeah. like. Yeah, at one point, he's sitting in his dad's backyard, and his dad has a set of weights that you would use to weigh a deer carcass, or you know, like for hunting, a huge one, and he's like. Yeah, just before the, because he's at this point he's he's locked in for surgery. So this is days away from his surgery, where they're going to remove this the the testicle and try to salvage his penis and everything. And okay. uh, he's sitting at his dad's place in in the backyard with no pants on or anything. And his dad gets the weight out. He's like, <laughs> "Well, well, one thing's for sure. I never thought I'd be wearing my son's testicle with one of these things." And it was just. <laughs> The whole thing was so, so absurd. God like it damn. was, it was ridiculous. But um, he got the surgery, and um, he managed to, um, you know, go back to somewhat normal. Like he's still like pretty overweight and stuff. Yeah, but, he's a pretty big guy. Um, you know, I mean, maybe he could he could try to try to lose lose some weight and and get get back on track or whatever. But I mean, at he least just, he, he doesn't just have... lost eighty pounds. That's pretty impressive. <sighs> Man, I I just don't know. <laughs> like it was all bandaged up and everything. It Jesus. must that must have really hurt yep. lugging that thing around. Like the yep. the pulling on the on oh the skin God. and everything must. Do you have reckon just he's gonna miss it? You know, it was like a, <laughs> a good friend. Oh, I can risk my drink on that. <laughs> You're gonna miss it. Poor guy. This reminds me of the South Park Randy Marsh episode <laughs> yeah. where his balls get all swelled up. Yeah. And he's bouncing around them on it. Maybe the, that episode was based on that. Hopper. I don't know. Could have been. Maybe. Could have been. But yeah, so I watched that while I was away, which was something else. I was it was it was an eye opener for sure. Wow. Yeah. I saw what, what different holidays you had. Yeah, yeah. very different. I yeah. did see Oppenheimer just before we went away. Oh, I went um, to see that too just before we went away. Yeah. God, we're like I saw, we're soulmates. I can't believe it. Oh, well, geez. I mean, you know, we we've been doing this podcast for fucking years True, now. True. We're, we're so in sync. I mean, we yeah, probably saw it at the on the same day at the same time. I saw it. Let me tell you when I saw it. Maybe, maybe we, we even maybe we can sync this up. And or odd at the same <laughs> time as well. At the so I saw moments. it on the 21st of August, Monday the 21st of August. Oh, I don't think I saw it on Monday the 21st. Oh, okay. And and my showing was at 9 a.m. Oh my God, no, there's no way I saw a movie at 9 a.m. Yeah, It would have been, probably been like a 2 p.m. for me. So this this was at the IMAX at, at Waterloo. Oh, how that was, was that? Uh, insane. Nice. Absolutely insane. We were like four rows back, which is still quite far from the screen. Yeah. But you can't really see the whole screen with your eyes. You have to like turn your head <laughs> at points. 
Yeah. Um, and there are some shots in the film that are just unbelievable on the IMAX. Um, I, I think technically, in terms of the technical achievement, it's incredible. The film is really, really amazing. Looks amazing the way it's shot on that IMAX film. It, at times, you could see like every single detail. Yeah. It, it's so crystal clear. It's like it's not even film. It's just like you're looking at real life. It's it's insane. It's not because it's not digital. The yeah. resolution is like perfect. However, I, this might be an unpopular opinion. I just want to say what I felt about Oppenheimer very briefly. I did enjoy it. I do think it was a good film. However, if I compare the plot of Oppenheimer and the, the story that they chose to tell and focus on, I didn't think it was the most interesting part about Oppenheimer. The focus to me, for anyone that hasn't watched the film, the focus in general is the fact that after the, the, the war and the bomb and all this, they took away Oppenheimer's top secret clearance. Yes. That's pretty much the story. That is the focus of the film. That. I felt exactly the same. And I'm just thinking, I was like, you know what I mean? Who fucking cares yeah. about your security clearance? And they're playing like epic music. Yeah. And like, like, I'm like, dude, you've done, you've had this pivotal moment in history. Like, just. Just step back. You don't need to <laughs> just, have. It was just. This. It was just like. Is that really the most interesting part of this story? Like they, they we we see that one like the test run the first time they blew up the bomb. But the pro and that was amazing. The way they filmed that. The 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 effects on the IMAX were nuts. Absolutely nuts. And yeah. I was like, oh, this I, is incredible. Don't get me wrong. I understand that the, the whole point is that you know this guy with his great contribution was kind of snubbed a bit and right. overlooked at a time in his life when he should have been celebrated. You yes. Know? I, 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 it is a sad way to to have the story. But there's, it, it, there's this thing that history is repeat. I look at Alan Turing, you know, exactly the same sort of thing happened right. to him because he was homosexual. But and I, I, would, I would definitely say that what Alan Turing's contribution to computing and to the war was far more benevolent, uh, if you like, than creating nuclear weapons. Um, and and essentially starting the Cold War. I mean, we almost pushed the button multiple times. <clears throat> and Oppenheimer himself at the end is obviously I am become death destroyer of worlds, and he's sort of horrified at what he's done. And there's all these question marks about was this actually a good thing? Did we need to drop the bomb? All these all this stuff. Especially given that it led to the Cold War, where there was this terrible fear and threat of nuclear yeah. Armageddon. You know, yeah. and, and people really thought the world was going to end. So, but the, for um, the focus of the film to be the story of him basically losing. A bit of administrative clearance and oh you see no longer you know sq or 2q secret or whatever i was like really that's the big dramatic bombshell in the film it just felt like i wanted to see more of the struggles of them building so, okay you the saw bomb and that sort of thing. so you saw it in imax right yeah yeah so you saw florence Pugh's nipples in like fucking oh, like baby. 10 meters high, she was like the size of the empire state building it was stunning i'm a big florence <laughs> florence pew fan <laughs> me too and i was like this is the greatest film i've ever seen in my life those they were like yeah like the size of like six foot she's gorgeous nipples i could fit inside one of her nipples that's how big they were in the imax <laughs> <laughs> on that I, I had a moment i'll tell you that it was and then you see her butt as well and i was like damn florence Pugh was like literally naked and, and, and yet and you never see tall. oppenheimer's cock once in the whole movie i know i was disappointed i wanted to see his 80 pound nut all that radiation this is not, this is not fair <laughs> yeah. i want to see his dick i want to see Where's it. his dick <laughs> yeah show me where's his goddamn cock <laughs> shout that out in the middle of the imax <laughs> is it, why is this not cool why is this not allowed and you know what's wrong nobody with that? wants to look at cocks i'm 2023 convinced. nobody wants to look at them. yeah very few people want to look at penises and it's such a honesty. common thing for people to now receive on their phone as i understand <laughs> that right. would have been a great twist is if we get to see Florence Pugh naked, but we just see a dick pic, an early 1940s dick pic. It's just a daguerreotype. Yes. Yeah, a daguerreotype of his dick. <laughs> well, like a silhouette, <laughs> like they used to do silhouettes. Uh, doesn't make sense, though, does it? No. Puffs on cigar. Crazy. I've sent you a daguerreotype of my penis in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Please write back. <laughs> you yeah. along with every other gentleman. This is getting to be too much. I liked. Uh, I thought. I thought Oppenheimer was good. I didn't really know what to to expect. I mean, it was. It was. It, it was nice. It was. It was. It was a good movie. It was good. Yeah. But yeah. It, I mean, the, the thing is, I I compare it to Interstellar, where it had far more set pieces and drama, and you were the the story sort of pulled you along. Yeah. I was on the edge of my seat watching that film. I didn't feel that way about Oppenheimer. And here's another thing. It's three hours long. Yeah, it's, it's three fucking hours long. And I, honestly, a hand on heart, you could cut an hour from that film. You really could cut an you hour really from could. that you film. You probably could. There is yeah. a lot of chin wagging where you think, 
Yeah. Okay, can we tidy this up a bit? But there's so many actors in it that you're like, oh, it's that guy. And he has like two lines. It's done nicely though. Like uh you, you feel kind of immersed in uh in, in the film. Like I know yes. it's I know it's long, but you don't you don't mind so much because the actors are all are all good, you know. Yes, they it, are it, all very it, good. It looks it looks great. Like it, it, it I didn't mind it too much. There was one point where I thought, like, holy crap, like because because part of the story s- seemed to sort of like almost wrap up a bit, and I thought, okay, well, it must be almost done. And then yeah. all this other stuff started happening. It's like, wait a sec, how fucking long wait is this? A yeah, yeah. But so but it was only the once. Point, <clears throat> about the point where they set off the test bomb, there's like an hour of the film after that. Yeah, and I looked at my watch and I was like, fucking hell, I there's another looked hour. At my watch as well. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Like, it. yeah, yeah. So I did. I did enjoy it, but I I personally think it's not going to be something I'm going to watch Imagine the again. film, maybe they could do like a director's cut and then just end the film there, like with the test bomb, after the explosion, and then it does that thing where it just transitions to a black s- screen. Oppenheimer was responsible for making the biggest explosion <laughs> of all time. <laughs> like, <you know? laughs> like it just sort of segues to the credits. Like that would that. be amazing. That would be fucking sweet. Yeah, but yeah it, was, uh, it was something. It was something, I'll tell you that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I thought it was pretty good. I have to go, actually, yeah. so we're going to we're gonna have to end <laughs> we'll end it on that bombshell that Lewis has to go okay. through. Right, well, thank you for joining us. That was our podcast for today. We'll see you all next time. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Farewell. Bye. Goodbye.